there are people climbing Everest today who should not be climbing Mount Everest. That's correct. In fact, uh, last year, there were only 8% fewer climbers on Mount Everest. The big factor between last year and this season was the weather. Last year, we had great weather for the second half of May, where teams could spread out and make their summit attempts over a two-week period. This year, it was a two-day period, so all the teams had to attempt Mount Everest on May 22nd and May 23rd, putting a lot of climbers up there at the same time, which caused the traffic jam and the, yeah, but the photo that went viral. I mean, let's talk about the numbers. 800 people were trying to get to the summit of Mount Everest in a, in a couple-day period. What should be done to limit those climbers, and more importantly, to make sure the people who are up there should be up there and are fit to be there. Is that the fault of guide companies like yours, or is it Nepal, or who's to blame for this problem? Who can fix well, it? Well, in fact, there's no regulation on who can offer a commercial expedition to Mount Everest. So there's companies like mine, which have a great track record, have had lots of people make the summit, no fatalities, no injuries on the way down. But then there's other companies with no experience, no relevant uh, qualifications to be offering a Mount Everest expedition, but because there's no regulation from the government on who can offer these trips, they can offer the expedition and people will sign up without having done their homework and right. having researched the company. And how much, Garrett, do you charge for this trip? 70000 is our base price. And do you think that's fairly typical? So if, if would you turn someone away if you felt like they weren't qualified and then could they just go elsewhere? Absolutely. I turn prospective climbers away every season. And we're at the very high end of the spectrum of companies offering climbs on Mount Everest. There's companies that charge half of that, but you might only get uh, half the oxygen. Well, half the oxygen supply? Right, right. That's a big part of making sure that everyone has enough uh, oxygen and other equipment to get up to the top and back down safely. Holy cow, Robert, that so, seems like a, a pretty major consideration. And the other interesting thing that's happening, he mentioned $70,000. This whole trip is becoming a status symbol, isn't it? Yeah, Garrett, that's my question. It, it, it's sort of tragic. Everest started when Edmund Hillary climbed it in the 1950s as this sort of symbol of adventure. And now it's just a status trophy for the wealthy. It's very expensive. How, what's involved in preparing to go to Everest so that, so that people are really ready for it? And do you think... This will, as the costs escalate, it's out of reach for everybody but the rich. Is that a problem? Well, we definitely require climbers that go with us to have done other big mountains as preparation, like Aconcagua, the highest in South America, Denali, the highest in North America, and other big technical peaks around the globe, and do those well before embarking on a Mount Everest climb so that we know everyone's prepared and ready to go. Not all companies require that. Some companies would take you with little to no experience and see what happens on the peak. Uh, in terms of cost prohibiting some climbers from having access, it is true, in fact, uh, there's a permit fee and other expenses that make it a very expensive endeavor. It's hard for us to understand the mindset of climbers who want to do this. We sit here, we see pay 80 grand to possibly die and you're frozen death on the mountain and maybe never come back because your body's but still there. that Instagram photo, Robert, is just going to be so worth it when you can you well, know, so show Garrett, that one I to guess, your friends. Why do it? Why do people do this? What's the reward? Well, as uh, Sir Edmund Hillary said, because it's there, but... I have to say, uh, having had my 10th summit of Everest, it's very exhilarating. Every time I go to the top of the world, um, it's magical, and uh, I never regret it. And I would say everyone else who summited with me would say the same thing. However, it is very risky. As you know, the death rate is about 2% uh, for climbers having summited Everest dying on their way down. So finally, Garrett, what happens to keep this from, uh, these deaths from occurring going forward? Well, I think better regulation needs to happen uh, in terms of which companies are allowed to offer expeditions to Everest, only qualified companies with relevant experience. And then climbers need to do their research and make sure they're choosing a company that's appropriate for them with their skill level. Um, additionally, the government of Nepal should require climbers to climb other big peaks before going to Everest, whether it's another 8,000-meter yeah. mountain or the highest in North or South Problem, America. The problem, of course, is there's a lot of money yeah. that they would lose for that, so that's tough.